Welcome back to Non-Enough Projects. Today we're back on the RV project. Last time we got the junkyard motor and transmission pulled. This time we're going to go ahead and get the engine torn down and see what needs done on it. We're going to give it a refresh before we get it back into the RV, so let's get it going. I haven't touched anything since we got it unloaded. So first things first, we're going to need to get the transmission separated from the engine. So we can get the engine up on the stand and get it torn down. Pretty good looking oil. Should have checked that at the junkyard. Should have seen that coming. I'm going to pop the flux plate off right now because when we get it on the engine stand it's kind of a pain to get off. Alright, so as always I've got a complete random assortment of nuts and bolts holding this thing onto the engine stand. We're going to switch this threaded rod out eventually, but for now that's what I've got. So we're going to use that little silly looking bit. It'll do the job. So let's get this onto the stand. You can see there's metal missing from cavitation in the pump. It's kind of interesting. Not like it's a huge deal or anything, but just kind of interesting to see. Well, I guess with all the accessories removed, we can go ahead and get all the wiring harness off and then pop the intake valve covers, heads. Yeah? So. Oh. It's looking much cleaner. Well, not literally cleaner, but less stuff in the way. Pretty nasty. Let's use the vacuum. Let's clean it up a little bit. Pop the distributor out. Not too concerned with gunk and stuff getting down there, but obviously you want to limit it as much as possible. That should be them all. One of them in the front broke, which is pretty typical, so that's not a huge deal. Did drop some dirt in here, unfortunately. Not a huge deal. Everything's getting cleaned up. Not real sludgy or anything. Pretty clean, to be honest with you. Great sign. Well, let's move on to getting the heads off. Awesome. Definitely happy with how that's looking. No real sludge to speak of. It's looking really clean. All right, so now that we're getting into internal engine stuff, I'm gonna switch over to hand tools. It's always good practice because you can feel kind of how all the fasteners are doing, feel any weirdness in the threads. Certainly you wanna undo all the head bolts by hand, main caps, rod bolts, all that jazz. This stuff, you'd, you know, you would be fine using an impact, but it's not a bad idea to just use hand tools and feel how all the bolts are torqued, how all the threads are doing. Now one thing I don't really mind doing is just uh, after loosening them up and making sure, checking all the torques, you know, how well they were torqued. I don't mind running them out with the impact. Lots of carbon on that one. Fair amount of carbon buildup. But from what I'm seeing so far, the bores look beautiful. You can still see the factory crosshatch. There is absolutely no ridge to speak of. I 
Nothing. This thing is gonna hunt up awesome, I think. That's just a testament to kind of modern engine design. Uh, you know, back when all production engines were carbureted, uh, they were run with a cooler thermostat also, and just the less controlled fuel mixture along with the lower operating temperature really accelerated bore wear. I mean, a lot of times you can pull, I've pulled lots of very high mileage junkyard motors, Ford motors mostly, um, and you know, there's negligible bore wear. So, you know, the, the really high operating temperature along with the precision fuel control really saves these engines. So, yeah, I'm really happy with how this side's looking. Lots of carbon buildup, but it's not a huge concern. The pistons all look intact. Let me get you in there so you can see the bore. Hopefully it's showing up on camera. Cross hatch. No vertical scarring to speak of, at least from what I can see so far. Obviously this is going to get a deep inspection. No sharing fire. Awesome. This is looking good. Let's get the other side off. Boars are looking pretty dang nice. I don't know how well it's shown up on camera, but cross hatch is visible in all parts of the cylinder, which is a great sign. The heads are obviously going to get torn down and get a thorough inspection. But one thing I noticed, look at these weird plugs they had in there. Wacky. Probably one of those gimmick plugs. Everything's looking okay though, just on first glance. On both heads. Color of the valves is fairly similar. You can see these are a little darker than some of the others, but some of the cylinders could just be burning a little bit more oil than the others, or who knows. We'll find out when we get closer into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get the lifters out. Now, being a Magnum motor, this obviously has hydraulic rollers, and, you know, it's not necessarily strictly imperative to keep them all in order, but you know it's probably good practice too. I will. Um, it's it's likely that we're going to be putting some kind of a little bit more of a cam in here, a towing cam of some kind, just to get a little bit more bottom end for the RV, because you know it's heavy. So this thing, if you're not familiar with this kind of factory setup, this is uh, they call it like the spider retainer or something, but. Anyways, each tab pushes down on these, which I call a dog wheel. I don't know what the uh, official term is, maybe lifter, retainer, or something. But anyways, it keeps the lifters from spinning. Because, if I can get this lifter out. No, that's not ideal. Probably carbon buildup or something on the lower part that never goes through the bore. Yeah, I see a little bit of varnish on the lower part. That's probably why I don't want to come out. Alright, so these lifters have varnish on the lower part, so they don't want to come out. But as you can see, there's a roller on the bottom part. And if it were to spin like this, the roller would no longer be spinning. It would just be metal on metal contact. Uh, which would be a lot of friction. It would just eat up the cam loop. So the little dog bone, this thing, goes under the flats of the roller lifter, keeps it from spinning, and then the spider pushes onto the dog bone and keeps it from coming off. Really the only purpose of this whole setup is to keep the lifter from turning in its bore, which would cause it to eat the cam lobes up. Now flat tappet rollers which is what older engines generally have, don't have a roller on the bottom. They're just a convex ground metal. And it's ground in such a way that as the cam lug spins, it forces the lifter to also spin. And the lifter spin is what allows the metal on metal contact not to destroy the cam. 
And on those, that's why you have to run a zinc kind of oil because the zinc, it acts as like a padding between the lower part of the lifter and the cam lobe. If you don't have that, it'll eat it up. And that's also why you have to run a break in on flat tabbit cams because the metal of the lifter actually wear mates into the lobe surface. Whereas a roller, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to do any kind of break in. You can just turn the key and run it. And you really are fine. You can get away just putting these any which way, but these obviously doesn't matter where they go. Here we go, here's one that might come out. Or maybe not. These might be a little stubborn, we're gonna put them out the bottom once we remove the cam. That's not a huge deal. They all look to be in pretty decent shape. So I'll just force them up so they don't fall out. Here's one. Never mind. All right, well, let's get the tennis cover off. This is one thing that an impact is ideal for. It is not fun to try to break these loose with the breaker bar. I don't remember if these magnum motors need a harmonic damper puller. It may. Yeah, looks like it does. It's got little flats for a three jaw puller, so I'll go grab one. Alright, I got the puller set up. Let's see if I can get this balancer off. Damper, it's not a balancer. Right there. Oh, yeah. Not too bad. Well, now the puller's stuck in there. I need to. Loosen all the jaws and take it off. Can't check our damper. A little bit of a ridge from where the seal rides. Yeah, maybe kind of a big ridge. We might need to use one of those seal savers on it. Uh, you know what? The oil pan's going to have to come up. Now that I think about it. There's oil pan bolts that go up into the tummy cover. Or we could just... Well, let's see. Maybe if they just pop the oil pan bolts off. There you go. Pretty clean. And definitely is gonna get replaced. It's got some slop. It's not the worst, but good time to replace it for sure. Alright, the cam should be ready to come out. We do want to do our best. Actually wait, we got we have the little parts are kinda of weird, aren't they? We got the Distributor intermediate shaft or whatever. So I think we're gonna actually have to wait on the cam coming out. You know, think about it. Not a big deal. Okay. Well, let's uh, pop the wheel pan off, I guess. One annoying thing that my junkyard often does is they punch a hole in the oil pan instead of taking out the drain bolt. It's really annoying because now I either have to weld up the hole or get a new can. So, hopefully your local junkyard doesn't do that. Alright, the oil pan should be free. Oh, dip 
zippies. Hang this up a little bit. There we go. Looking really pretty good down here. Nothing concerning that I can see. And as far as in here, well, that's looking really good. I'm happy. Very happy. A little bit of crud in the pickup. Pretty normal. Now, before we get too crazy popping up pistons and all that, I do want to mark them all. Okay, so I'm kind of used to the Ford numbering system, to be honest to you, with you. So, I think it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, if that number eight. So I'm just going to use the screwdriver and lightly scribe into the top of the piston the number and direction. Okay, we should all be scribed now. So let's start uh, popping out pistons, I guess. I'm going to also actually grab a paint pen and just mark one side of each cap so that it's painfully obvious how it goes back together. All right, with everything marked, we are good to go ahead and pop all the pistons out. Wow, bearing's looking pretty dang good. Crank feels good, no... No grooves that, are, that I can feel with my fingernail. At least with the glove on. We'll obviously go over this again once it's out. And then we're just gonna gently tap this thing out. So I need to rotate the crank a little bit. The handle on this one is a little too thick. This one should do. Oh, this is looking really good, guys. Pretty happy with this. Pretty happy. Just uh, the uh, camera died there, and I didn't realize it until now. But all that I did is took all the pistons up to number uh, what's that? Five out. They're all looking great, just like number one. So we're just gonna keep on trucking along. All right. Well, overall the crank is looking excellent. Any kind of scratches I cannot feel, so they're just um, superficial, I guess you could say. This crank is going to be cleaning up really well if the mains look just like the rod journals. So yeah, let's get the main caps off and see what we're working with. Now the main caps absolutely have to be kept in order, and they need to go in the proper direction. They're machined to the block. These, and pretty much every production engine, have the number stamped, so it says one, two, three, four, five. And obviously the rearmost cap is obvious, much bigger. And additionally, you can see there's this marking on the passenger side of the engine. So the cap should be in there pretty good. Which that one is, it should be kind of like an interference fit. Oh man, yep, this bearing is just beautiful. Brand new. Journal is just as nice. That is awesome to see. Let's just crack these all loose. On one go. Slight score in the center. That the crank is unaffected. Bearing looks great. See the number three is the thrust bearing cap. This one is a little bit more wear than the others. It's not horrible. Crank looks great. Again, another good one.
Okay, that one was in there pretty good. Crank journal feels awesome. Crank bearing does have a couple scores, so I picked up a little bit of a debris at some point, but crank is undamaged. One thing, I'm I'm not familiar with these Magnum engines really. This is going to be the first one I'm doing a rebuild on. One thing that's surprising to me is that it uses a two-piece seal, it looks like. Which is kind of weird. By this point, I think both Chevy and Ford were using the one-piece seals because two-piece seals tend to be more prone to leakage. But hey, it works, I guess. All right, well, let's go ahead and take the crank out. The lower bearing halves look just as good as their upper counterparts, and uh, at this point, all we need to do really is take the cam out. To be honest with you, I don't know if that's the right way to do that. But it's the way I did it. I was just tapping lightly. I wasn't really that afraid of damaging anything. Cam does seem to be in there quite well. A lot of times the oil film has a lot of surface tension, I guess is what it would be. And it can cause a bit of trouble. So I'm just going to lightly pry. Yeah, Alright, this is kind of interesting. So I tapped the cam back in a little bit. And if I tap the cam in a little bit, it turns freely. So what I'm thinking is that there's a <clears throat> some oil varnish buildup or something on the back side of the cam so it doesn't want to come through the bearing. So we're just gonna have to use a little bit of persuasion, I guess. Um, yeah, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Worst case, we can pop the rear plug that sits behind the cam and we can tap it out that way, but I'd like to try to not do that. Given that that plug's in good shape. There it goes. Just gently bring it out of here. You don't want to damage the cam bearings. I'm going to reuse them if they're in good shape. It's always good to reuse them if you can. Yeah, I see a little bit of oil varnish build up on the cam bearings, so. Just have to keep that in mind. Cam looks pretty good. I'd like to replace this with something that makes a little bit more power or torque really is what we need but we'll see keep this for now membranes don't look too bad they're gonna cleaned up before I can tell for sure but they're in okay shape Let's see if we can get the lifters out now And again, I'm going to keep these in order. It's not strictly necessary, I wouldn't say, but I'm going to do it anyways. They're looking okay. A little bit of oil varnish buildup. That's probably what's making them so hard to... Thank <laughs> you. 
So I might end up running a wheel cylinder home through those. Through the lifter boards, I mean. You definitely want those uh, moving freely. It's an important thing. I'm just gonna use a small bell, finish tapping it out. Gonna see the wheel varnish. I was hanging it up. All right, well, let's get this intermediate gear, whatever you want to call it out. There it is. Looks like we had the same story there, some varnish built up holding it in. Not too concerned about that. Overall, it looks pretty good. No real wear on the teeth or anything like that. So with that, we pretty much have this engine torn down all the way. We still have a lot of cleaning and inspection ahead of us. We're going to tear down the heads fully, make sure everything is good there. Hopefully everything's happy there. That's where you can drop a lot of money. 